So it is time for the Ericaism of the day. And I've heard many, 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 many people talk about their dysfunctional families and what we can't do. And if we was more like this family, and if we were more like that family, and we could have a legacy if it wasn't for uncle so-and-so, and we'd be all right if it wasn't for cousin so-and-so. Well, let me tell you about a few families in the Bible. I mean, just chock full of dysfunction. Whether it was the very first family when Eve was disobedient to God and caused her husband to sin and change the entire course of humanity, or whether it was the firstborn son that killed his brother, whether it was Sarah being disobedient, not believing, laugh, literally laughing at God. The Bible says Sarah laughed when the Holy Spirit told her that she was going to have a child. And she told her husband to sleep with her maid. Then when she slept with her maid, then the maid laughed at Sarah. I was like, hey, hey, you can't have no babies. And so then Sarah gets mad, kicks Hagar out. Or whether it is uh, the brothers, uh, uh, Esau and Jacob, who who uh, 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 tricked each other out of the birthright. His father didn't have discernment. I mean, just story after story, story after story, whether it was Laban who made Jacob work for 14 years for his wife, Rachel. I mean, it's just dysfunction everywhere. And guess what? And still we're reading about them in the word of God. And still we understand that these are people who are the forefathers of our faith. These jacked up people. So I don't care how jacked up your family is. I don't care what your uncle did. I don't care if your dad's been in jail. I don't care if your mom's on drugs. None of that matters. God can still get glory out of your family. And it does not mean leave your family. I have to leave my family to go be great. You don't. You don't. Even in the story of Joseph, whose father treated him like a favorite, who gave him a designer jacket and his brothers were so mad, they threw him in a pit and tried to get the, and told his dad, oh, some ass, the lions ate the son, he gone. And then turn back around and that same brother have to deliver his brothers and sisters, have to feed them because there was a famine in the land. Nowhere in the Bible does it say run and disown your family. So don't disown your family just because they're not as churchy as you want them to be. Don't disown your uncle just because he come to church smelling like weed. Man, let Jesus change him. You can't. That's right. If you could have, you would have done it a long time ago. You know, maybe your father d does have some issues. Let it, Bring him to church with you on Easter Sunday. You know, love them anyway. Let the love of Jesus change them. Y'all don't get around the table and start fussing about who did what. Y'all extend forgiveness across the table. Extend love and mercy and grace and let God use your family and stop calling your family a dysfunctional family. It's just a family like everybody else's. We all got issues in our family. We all got cousins and brothers and nephews and aunties and uncles that do crazy stuff. And guess what? We all have just a little bit of crazy in us. So let's just love people where they are. Let God do the change. Don't throw your family away. Love your family. That's your legacy. That's your blood. That's your strength. Okay? Nobody's perfect. Nobody has a perfect family. Nobody, 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 nobody. Everybody has had sin in their family. Even the Bible says, for all has sinned. It didn't say the Johnson never sinned or the Adams never sinned. For all have sinned. The Atkins have sinned. The Campbells have sinned. But there's grace. Griff said the Griffins too. Right. All have sinned. But we thank God for his grace. So don't be tripping off your dysfunctional family. Love them just how they are, okay? That is my Ericaism for the day.